exactly on Mars time. Um, so for the first time since uh, uh, Viking, we have instruments that have samples from uh, the Martian soil inside and are ready to start analysis. We are, <coughs> excuse me, our results uh, uh, from these analyses are going to be used to inspire future missions that will come to Mars and hopefully take over where we leave off because we're bound to raise lots of questions. Okay, um, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, digging into the Martian soil and this has been something we've been doing for the last uh, week or so and uh, digging in soil has been of course one of our key activities because we're trying to find an ice layer which we're told exists. Uh, we see a hard surface underneath the lander and now as we dig into the soil um, we see a, a hard bright surface right uh, within uh, just a few inches of the upper layer and if I can show the first picture that is our first dig test into the soil and uh, and then next to it you can see flashing on and off is where we've done our sampling so the first dig test actually uh, disclosed a, a bright surface just a few inches down two two and a half inches and uh, so we've taken our samples right next to that and we've delivered those samples to our TIGA instrument and our uh, microscopic instrument uh, but there's still some debate about that bright material so uh, in the next slide we can see what we've done very recently is to try and dig a little deeper in both of these areas and uh, we see the exposed uh, ice it's so this is <laughs> I'm sorry, this is the second slide which shows uh, the same two locations as, um, as it was sampled a few days ago. Now the latest picture will be the next one that just came down today and that's not a, a there it is. So that's the exposed ice is just as we've seen it today as we dug a little deeper into these two trenches. And uh, now not everybody is sure that this is ice, so there's been some debate within our team. And, and the debate centers around perhaps there's a salt layer above the ice, which would be very bright and white also. So we don't want to discount that possibility. And uh, some people hold on to this theory and some don't. So we've had a, a fairly intense debate among the team whether that's ice or salt, but everybody believes there's ice near the surface. Whether that's it or not is the, the question. The other question is, is this thick ice that goes down deep beneath the surface or perhaps this is a thin layer and we'll be able to scrape through it. So scraping with our uh, tungsten carbide scrapers on the scoop is really a high priority for us. Um, the next uh, topic is delivery to the TIGA instrument and the, my next slide shows the first delivery to TIGA which was a big scoop full of material dropped onto the cell and it stuck and would not go through the screen and you can see it's laying there on top of the, the open doors of the TIGA instrument. The TIGA oven showed no response. We uh, tried using our little shaker device day after day for four days and after seven shakes, if I can show the next slide, yesterday we were successful and this is a picture showing that the material has slid down over the the screen sort of like going over a cheese grater and some of the material has gone inside and has filled the oven and uh, we sent the commands for the first operation last night but we don't have our data back yet so we can't report on any results today this will be coming uh, early next week so this is very exciting time for us we find the soil is very clumpy it's very sticky it's an unusual soil not at all like the types of soils we've used in our tests which uh, work just fine with all the instruments and so we've developed another method of, of collecting samples and that is to tilt the scoop a little bit and then vibrate it with a uh, a little uh, power tool we have on the scoop so it vibrates it a little and it shakes some soil down and it kind of rains down onto the screen or onto the delivery port and we think this is the method we're going to be using from now on and we'll hear more about that. Um, so next week, pay attention, we'll have results from TIGA and we'll be delivering samples to our wet chemistry cells and uh, to, to uh, show off the, to introduce my next speaker, I have a wonderful uh, animation done by our co-investigator Eric DeYoung and this will introduce our next speaker, Tom Pike.
So let's watch the animation. Here we are from our launch pad, looking up at the brightest object in the sky, which, as we zoom in a little bit, turns out to be Mars. <laughs> And we're going at an incredible rate of speed towards Mars in this animation, a little faster than the spacecraft, which took 10 months. And we didn't slow down quite as rapidly, but uh, in any case, we're zooming in on our spacecraft on the uh, polygonal terrain, and there's our MECA instrument. And now a wonderful picture taken with the microscope. Tom, will you tell us about it? Thanks very much, Peter. Yeah, this is the highest resolution image of the soil of Mars. and. We're looking at a, a sample that was delivered using, well, a variety of uh, uh, sequences we had to have operating to get this soil in. This is the first sample delivery to an instrument inside a spacecraft since the Viking missions over 30 years ago. And we didn't know so much about the soil when we came down. The, the remote sensing uh, satellite data told us a lot about the ice. It didn't tell us too much about the cohesiveness of the soil, and we've had to work that out as we went along. So if we go to the next slide, just to show you what we needed to uh, do to uh, get this soil into the microscope station. As we zoom in here, we see the, the microscope station which shares its box with the wet chemistry laboratory. Those are the four cells on the right-hand side. And at the front, you will see a little uh, uh, U-shape. And if we see right in front of me, we have a mock-up of the very same box. And right in a chute here, we have the substrates poking out. Now, these are what we use to capture the sample that we deliver to the field of view of the optical microscope. So during the delivery phase, the uh, substrates are sitting outside of the box. And they're ready for the robot arm to deliver a sample. So if we go to the next image here, the next animation, we see that the way that we had the robot arm deliver the sample in this particular case was not just a, a dump of the soil as had been done with Tiger, but a sprinkle. And we tested this. We took three days in testing how to go about this sprinkle so that we would just get, we're hoping, the right amount of material on. We wanted enough material for it to be representative of the soil that we're looking at, but not so much that we would completely cover the substrates and not be able to see the individual particle sizes. So the robot arm came over the top of the microscope box and a, a vibrator that is inside the, uh, inside the scoop, which is used for when we are actually digging into hard material to loosen that, we, we've been improvising with that to try and see that we get a good sample to us. So if we go to the next slide, this is what actually happened. And you can see the scoop there um, poised just above the chute. In fact, it has just delivered the sample. You can see on the top of the box the particles, somewhat clumpy, and then just below the broader white area in the middle of the chute, those are our substrates outside, and this confirmed that we got a good sample of Mars material. So that's how we get it onto the substrates outside of the box. We now need to be able to bring that in front of the field of view of the microscope. And the next animation shows how we go about this. So we see the sample wheel in yellow uh, sticking out of the box. And what we have to do, we have to rotate that round uh, so that it comes round in front of the two microscopes that we have. Today, I'll be presenting data from the optical microscope. That's the orange microscope on the right-hand side. So the wheel has come round, and then we can move the wheel into the focus position. Just in front of that orange uh, optical microscope, we have the atomic force microscope that we hope to be bringing into operation in the next week or so. Okay, so on the next image, we can see what we have